In this question, we are given a special type of equation called a partial differential equation, or PDE. Now, it says this particular one is known as Laplace's equation. It has lots of applications. The subscripts, of course, mean partial derivatives. And what we're asked to do is show that this function u, defined by this logarithm, is a solution. Okay. Now, we don't know much about partial differential equations, apart from that we'll probably see a lot of them in science, engineering, commerce, finance. So at the moment, what we're kind of limited to doing is checking that a given function really is a solution. Now, what do we mean by a solution? Well, we mean that this function here makes this equation balance or hold. Okay? So in other words, if I was to compute the partial derivatives of this function that appear up here and add them together, I should get zero. Okay? It's just like when you're solving a quadratic equation at school and you want to check that you've actually got, a, got the right root or the right solution. You plug it back into the equation and you see if it holds. There's nothing different about this. It's just that we've got derivatives instead of you know, numbers. Okay, so how do we, how do, we do this? Well, we, to, to compute this and this, we want to compute the derivatives of this function here. And then we'll add them together. Okay, so I'm going to... do the following. Let's compute u sub xx and u sub yy and show they satisfy star. All right, that's, that, that's like what we're thinking about when we're doing this problem. So how do we actually compute the derivatives? Well, you could use the chain rule here, but some people are more comfortable just with, you know, just writing it down, okay? So the quick way of doing this problem would be the following. You cover up the log, you look at this, you compute the partial derivative of this with respect to x or y, and then multiply that by the derivative of the logarithm function. Okay, let me say that again. You cover up the logarithm function, you're left with a square root sign of x squared plus y squared. Compute the derivative of that with respect to either x or y, whichever one you want, and then multiply that by the derivative of the log function. Okay, let me show you. Okay, so by this I just mean I'm about to take the derivative of what's in, this, in the brackets, the ddx. Okay, so if I differentiate square root of x squared plus y squared with respect to x, what will I get? So I'm, I'm forgetting about the log. I just want to differentiate this partially with respect to x. Well, you imagine y is a constant. What am I, what am I going to get? Anyone know? I could do that using a chain rule as well, but I'm not going to. Think about, think about this, right? If I write it up here, like this, to differentiate this with respect to x, what do I do? The half comes to the front, the derivative of what's in the bracket comes to the front, and they decrease the power by 1. OK? It's just like a power rule. OK? You bring the power to the front, you decrease it by 1, and you multiply through by the derivative of what's in the brackets. That's it. OK? So, okay, so bring the half to the front, I'll get one half. The derivative of what's in the brackets is 2x, bring that to the front, decrease the power by one. If I decrease the power by one, I'll get negative a half there. Okay, times the derivative of the logarithm function. What's the derivative of a log? It's just one on whatever's, whatever the log's acting on. That's it. Okay.
All right, so if you simplify that a little bit, the square roots are going to cancel out. The 2 and the half will cancel out. Oops, so I'm left with this. Oops, 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 oops. Yes. All right, what about... Wait, sorry, how did the square roots cancel out? When you multiply them together. Oh, right. So a square root by times square root just gives you a power of 1. All right, um, u sub y. Let's do it, do it with, in a similar way. Okay, what's going to happen now? Let's cover up the logarithm, the outside function if you like, and compute the derivative of what's left with respect to y. Okay, same, just go back up to here. The half comes to the front, the 2y comes to the front, and the, decrease the power by 1. Okay, then all we do is multiply by the derivative of the logarithm. The derivative of the log is just 1 over whatever's inside the log. Okay, so we're going to need a lot of cancellation there. Alright, so we spent a fair bit of time computing those derivatives, but in order to get the second derivatives, we need the first derivatives, which we've spent a fair bit of time doing. So now we can differentiate what we've got and compute our second order derivatives. Okay, so u sub x, x is just the derivative up here differentiated with respect to x. Okay, so I can use the quotient rule again. Okay, so I've got this here. And it's going to be something like the following. V times U dash minus U times V dash all over V squared. All right, that's the quotient rule. So if I go through and compute ddx of x, I get 1. ddx of x squared plus y squared, that's... Um, 2x so then if I simplify the top uh, what am I going to get? I'm going to get x squared plus y squared minus 2x squared so I'm going to get a y squared minus x squared alright so that's just a quotient rule All right, so we've got one of these derivatives. Let's compute the the third one, uh, the the last one that we need. So let's we can use that. All right. Similarly, u sub y y is just this. So let's go up to here and compute the derivative with respect to y, okay, again by the quotient rule. So it's this v times the derivative of u, which is up top, minus the derivative of this with respect to we, uh, uh, y times that. Uh, all over the square of what's on the bottom. Okay. All right, so we now we just need to differentiate and clean this up a bit. Uh, very similar to the previous step. So we're going to get a 1 here. We're going to get a negative 2y squared there. So when you multiply through, we're going to get something like x squared minus y squared. All over x squared plus y squared squared. All right, so let's compare what we've got now. Our two partial derivatives, are kind of, they look kind of similar. In fact, one is the negative of the other. Okay, This is the negative of that. Okay, So let's go back to our uh, PDE. And we'll show that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So... Uh, 
that's that, plus this derivative up here. Okay, so one, one's the negative of the other, so that'll cancel. Hence, let's call this double star. All right, so we're super happy.